Uh, hi everyone, my name is Ben Liu. I'm a software engineer at Pinterest. I graduated last year and since then I've been working on large scale data analytics. Uh, and then um, let's see what we built using Flink on uh, experiment analytics. So for this talk, I will uh, mainly cover three parts. Uh, first is uh, uh, the whole, whole thing, the overview, and also second, we will go deep into one of the operators for this Flink pipeline. Uh, and the third thing, we will share some uh, learnings we got from this development, uh, mainly on checkpoint failure and uh, data validation. Uh, so a little bit background. Um what, what is A-B test and why A-B test is important? Uh, so from this quote, uh, it basically tells us that uh, if you don't pay enough attention to your A-B test or you launch an experiment uh, or you launch an, uh, a feature without testing it, uh, you might screw up your business. So, uh, so what is A-B test? A-B test uh, is, uh, say, I'm an uh, IT company. I, I want to launch some new feature. Then uh, before I launch it, I, I select a small set of users and then randomly assign them to control and treatment groups. And, and then I expose them to uh, different treatments. Uh, in our case, it can be a U UI change or some backend change. And then we measure a bunch of uh, business metrics on these groups, and then we uh, evaluate uh, w what's the effect of uh, these, these changes. Uh, so uh, that means the quicker we can deliver experiment metrics, also the, uh, uh, the, 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 the more value we provide to uh, business, and then the more features we can iterate on. Uh, and before we go to the, the pipeline itself, I'd like to cover a bit on all the commonly used terms for this project. Uh, so the first two, experiment hash and experiment group. Uh, experiment hash is just a u unique identifier of an uh, AB experiment. And the group is, uh, as we mentioned before, uh, people are assigned to control and treatment. So group is a group name. Then. In, uh, for this pipeline, we are mainly dealing with two kinds of uh, messages. Uh, yes, and uh, one is event. So basically, this kind of message uh, tells you who did what at what time. Uh, and uh, the other is experiment activation. Uh, this message tells you who was triggered into which experiment at what time. Uh, and the, the, the result of this uh, Flink pipeline is uh, to produce experiment metrics. And uh, experiment metrics are, um, uh, there are two, two kinds of experiment metrics, uh, propensity and uh, volume. Uh, so propensity is the number of unique users who perform that, uh, some action. And the uh, volume is the to total number of actions uh, that has been performed. For example, for action tab click, uh, propensity is how many people uh, clicked, and uh, volume is how many clicks have, have been done. Okay, with that in mind, uh, the, the goal for this uh, pipeline is once an experiment got, got launched, we want to immediately start computing uh, num actions and, and num users, which is uh, volume and propensity metrics for a set of most important action tabs. In our case, it would be, say, uh, number of searches, uh, number of clicks, uh, and impressions. Uh, and also, we want to periodically send uh, metrics update uh, since the launch of the experiment, and this process should continue for three days. And uh, we also perform statistical tests on the fly. Uh, and before we set up all the uh, Flink pipeline, uh, we mainly relied on two uh, existing ex uh, experiment analytics services. One is our daily batch pipeline. It's in uh, Spark, uh, and it runs in an ad hoc fashion. Uh, it computes metrics based on several days data. Uh, it's more statistical, st statistically powerful because 
it's based on more data, uh, but it is slow. And uh, once I launch an experiment, I need to wait for up, up, up to 24 hours to see the first, first batch of results. Uh, say I launched some bad experiment, I won't be able to catch uh, the failure. Uh, the other one is uh, hourly batch pipeline. Uh, it's also a batch job, uh, it, but it, uh, it's, typically delayed by two to three hours, and uh, it's based on one hour worth of data, which means uh, it's, it's less statistically powerful. Uh, so uh, what we have achieved f uh, from this development, uh, what we got is uh, the waiting time for experiment metrics uh, was reduced from 24 hours to 15 minutes. Uh, that means we had a faster decision making. And also, uh, for the same uh, developing uh, speed, we were able to uh, get experiment results uh, that are based on from one hour worth of data to three, three days worth of data, because we keep c accumulating experiment data. Uh, and this means more st statistical power and uh, more uh, insights with more statistical robustness. Uh, and uh, this is... Uh, screenshot of the dashboard we built, uh, which is powered by this uh, Flink pipeline. Uh, as you can see here, uh, this is uh, for volume metrics, and you have control group, treatment groups. And uh, for this pipeline, we show uh, all the st 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 uh, statistical details, such as uh, lift and uh, confidence interval for different confidence level. We also plot p-value as a time series, and we give uh, details the counts for every 15 minutes, uh, and uh, it's in this uh, embedded, embedded tabular. Uh, next, I'd like to mention the, the scale of this problem. So for the four to Kafka topics we, uh, we were dealing with, um, they are quite large, uh, and also um, we, it turns out that uh, Flink is able to um, uh, process millions of messages per second, and uh, that's, I, I, that's why we, we loved it. Um, and a, a little bit more about the, this job stats. Well, at any given time, we are computing experiment metrics for 200 to 300 experiment groups, and we are maintaining around one, 150 gig uh, state. Uh, and uh, major computer computation is done in parallelism 256. Uh, next, I, I'd like to go over the high, high level uh, design of this pipeline. So it consists of three parts. First, uh, we are only uh, interested in a, su a subset of actions. Uh, so we have a, a Flink job that do a a filtering all the row event messages by action tab, and we write it to an intermediate Kafka queue. Uh, second, uh, we have uh, the, these three com components, uh, what it does is uh, it's, it does experiment activation filtering. Uh, it, the filtering is done by doing a, a key the broadcast join uh, with a experiment whitelist, which uh, which is produced by querying experiment metadata. And the third part is a mean aggregation job. It takes a filtered event and a filtered experiment activation, and uh, uh, it computes results and sends to our in-house analytics DB uh, through REST or Thrift. Uh, next, I'm going to go over one of the operators. Uh, I, we, we think it is interesting because uh, it is able to handle a uh, large amount of messages. Also, uh, we are using some low-level Flink API to handle mess message lateness. Uh, first, this is a input ma message format for this operator. Uh, is as the name shows, it is a user action joined with experiment metadata. So basically, uh, it has experiment metadata and also the, the uh, action performed at some some time for some user. Um, for example, one message can tell you, say, Alice was triggered into experiment A and group control uh, at time T1, and Alice clicked at time T2. 
And also, there is an embedded uh, Boolean field called the user first time seen. Uh, it is a Boolean value that tells you uh, if this is the first time we see Alice perform such action in this experiment. Um, and the output for this operator would be uh, updated counts for uh, this experiment and this group for this event tap click through. Uh, that would be how many people uh, by now uh, have done click throughs and how many click throughs uh, we have collected so far. Uh, that's num actions and num users. Uh, and this is, uh, so this operator is a key the process function uh, in Flink. And what does key the process function do? Uh, so it first, it, it maintains a set of uh, states. And then once upon we receive a new message, it will use the state it maint maintained to uh, produce uh, more uh, output. And also it will update the state. Um, so in our case, what we have is uh, for state, we have a map state which maps a uh, uh, timestamp to two, two uh, numbers, which is uh, num actions and num users. So for example, here, we maintain a map state which maps uh, June 24th to 1345 uh, to 92K and 23K. This means by the time uh, 1345, we have 92 pin click throughs performed and there are uh, 23k uh, users uh, did p uh, click through mm. and then uh, once given we, once we receive a message uh, which has the same format as I described uh, before uh, we on, on one hand we check uh, which timestamps will be uh, will be affected by this message. Uh, for example, for this green message here, uh, the timestamp for it is uh, 1303. Then we want to check for which time buckets uh, this message will affect the count. So for 1303, it will uh, affect the counts for 1315, 1330, and 1345. Uh, we we added this component in order to handle uh, message later arrival. Uh, and we want to always give the, the correct uh, results because people make decisions based on uh, metrics. Uh, this is on one hand. On the other hand, uh, we take this message and check the embedded Boolean field. If this is the first time we see uh, this user perform this action in this experiment, uh, if the answer is yes, we uh, will uh, update both number of actions and the number of users uh, because we have a new user perform such action. Uh, and uh, if the answer is no, we, we will only increment number of actions. Uh, after that, uh, we basically uh, updated all the states for the uh, affected time buckets. Then we write this uh, state back and uh, we send the resulting message, message to downstream. And here, uh, since we process uh, around one million messages for this operator per second, we don't want to constantly uh, let the message hit our uh, analytics DB. So what we did is we added a 15-minute processing tumbling window, which will fire every 15 minutes and send the latest results to analytics DB. And this concludes this, uh, this concludes this operator. Uh, next, I want to share some uh, learnings from this development. First is checkpoint failure. We were having checkpoint failure from time to time because uh, the states we were maintaining uh, is quite large, and most of them was uh, checkpoint timeout. Uh, and uh, it uh, typically looks like this. You have some checkpoint, checkpoints uh, that can uh, finish within two seconds, but suddenly it, it cannot uh, finish within 30 minutes. Uh, and also, if you take a further look into the um, the operator, uh, you can find that some task uh, failed to send acknowledgement. Uh, and the debug steps we took uh, for this issue was uh, first locate the subtask that was that was stuck. Then we found which task manager was hosting such uh, s such subtask, and we see is there anything wrong with uh, inside the log. Uh, then after that, we also use JStack to take a closer look at uh, what exactly that subtask was doing. 
and the root cause for that issue turns out uh, to be the subtask that was stuck, was just too busy pro processing messages. Uh, and uh, this introduced a high back pressure. And if you have high back pressure, uh, then the checkpoint barrier cannot move forward. And without checkpoint barrier moving forward, you uh, cannot uh, do ch checkpoints. Uh, and then we also checked why this ta subtask uh, was stuck, and we found that this this subtask got uh, 100 times more messages than its peers, um, and uh, then uh, that means we have huge data skill here, uh, and we know that the messages were keyed by user ID before sending to uh, this operator. Then we know for some user ID, we have tons more uh, messages uh, that indicates a potentially uh, spammer spammer problem. And for remediation, we, what we did is we find a 95% percentile of action counts for users. Uh, and then we basically cap uh, all the event message per user. Uh, say, uh, if inside one hour we have more than fi 500 messages generated by this user, uh, he is probably uh, a spammer, then we will send only the first X messages. And it turns out it solved this problem. Uh, and as for data validation, uh, what we did is we uh, built another batch pipeline, which does exactly the same thing uh, with the same configuration. And uh, so it reads from experiment activation and the event from S3. And then it computes a metric, matrix and write to uh, a hive table. And then we have another, set, another checker job, which reads uh, both the, the, the data from hive table and also from our uh, real-time results and compare them if there's a discrepancy we send alerts. Uh, and it will typically look like this. Uh, an email tells you which experiment uh, had wrong results. Uh, as mentioned by my colleague Steve this, this morning, uh, this is the first uh, Flink-based application in production at Pinterest. Uh, so huge thanks to all the folks who provided help. And that's it. Thanks. Okay, so you mentioned that you have uh, a size of 150 gigabytes of state, right? Y yes. So uh, what's the size of your cluster? How many like hardwares do you have? Okay, uh, we have, for that one, uh, 40, 40 nodes. 40 nodes? Yeah. Uh, uh, and for each, each node, it is uh, uh, X... Uh, it, uh, uh, sorry, I, I forgot the instance tab, but, but I, we, I can, we can... Uh, okay, so, yeah, the, so basically offline. it's a huge cluster, right? Y yes, I mean, pretty, pretty powerful machines. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, thanks. Okay, and I think we can wrap it up. Thank you so much, Ben. Thank you.